Hello, Angel in the city of Angels, Los Angeles, California. How did you get them to name the city after you? That's what I want to know. Anyway, it's Matthew with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. And with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut prescription lenses with Transitions Gray for your Versace. In fact, let's turn it over. It is the 1175 color 1002 in the 53 eye size. Let's go ahead and take everything out. This is the box that it comes in. Of course, your white leather Versace case, your Versace cleaning cloth, some extra string, which we won't need, um, your Versace cleaning cloth, your card of authenticity that you can register your product with Versace, and you're going to receive all the manufacturer's original packaging. But nonetheless, here's the star of the show, the main attraction, the headliner. It is the Versace, and of course it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect it from rubbing together while it is being shipped from Italy, because all Versaces are made in Italy. And of course I'm going to put that on there when I ship to you, but this is it. Let me turn this, put the spotlight on there, but this is the gold with the brown marble, and of course all the bling. Versace is going to bring the bling. Beautiful, beautiful frame. So let's go ahead and begin cutting your prescription lenses for this. So, I've got to take one of your lenses out. Not the one that says Versace, I always work with the right lens, but I'm gonna take one out and trace the shape of it. But first, let me find a red pen, a red one, red one. I'm gonna put two dots on there. Excuse me if any of this out of focus. Of course, I can just change the camera, but I'm going to put a dot on one side of the lens using my graph and a dot on the other that just gives me a straight line now that i have the straight line i am going to take the lens out of the frame come on lens come on out come on out don't be nervous don't be shy so i'm going to take my little tracing platform turn it right side out pull the little sticker off so the black side is sticky now that i have those two red dots and the background is a line on here so i'm going to take those red dots put them onto that line make sure it's on there nice and straight and it is put in the tracing platform and trace the right lens it's going to ask me the size of the bridge which is 17 let's type that in 17 and this little stylus is going to come up and it's going to go around and trace the shape of the right lens here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality you buy a genuine authentic versace frame and you're going to receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipts have my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or not, or, or flex dollars, I should say, you will get reimbursed for this purchase whether they are prescription or not. And ironically, your right lens is not prescription, but your left one is. So that is the shape we will be cutting. Let me take this back off. Pop that on there. That is the shape of your lens. I'm going to magnify it as I work on it there. So let's go ahead and get your lenses prepped. Well, I can leave that down there. So your right eye is Plano, which means no prescription whatsoever. Now let's go ahead and mark that. That is the right lens, which has no prescription. Where's my pen? That is the right lens, making this one the left lens. And I always highlight the prescription for you to see it because you're going to receive all the manufacturer's original packaging, including the lenses, so you know that you're getting the Essilor brand lenses. So, let me take the right lens out. They actually come with a little plastic laminate on the front of the lens to protect the lens from while it is being shipping. Nothing can run against that, rub against it, and I'm going to put that on there, and you will receive that too. So I'm going to put your lens in, find the center. Normally I look through the viewfinder, but I don't need to. I'm just going to put the three dots on your lenses, one of which is really light, and it's actually not even needed on this one, but we're going to put an R on here for right. Now let's do the same thing for the left. Your left eye reads Plano minus 75 at 115. Plano, which is zero minus 75. Let me turn this on, make sure it's all zeroed out at 115, which is exactly halfway between 110 and 120. Take the left lens out of the sleeve, pull the laminate off the front, place that on there so I know where it's at. Put your lens into my lens. I'm going to rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly. Find the optical center of the lens, check your astigmatism correction, and let's put three dots on your lenses. 
Uno Dos 15. And I'm going to put an L on here, which stands for not right, just like me, because I ain't right either. Let's take everything up. We're going to come back down here. Let's go ahead and take your right lens, put it on this platform. Your left lens I can set down here. So, this is a block, or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. Woohoo! Look at that. Lightning quick reflexes there. So I need a double-sided adhesive sticker, which I've got two up here. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick one onto the first block, set that there. Put one onto the second block. Now, if you notice, there's a little silver button on the back. That is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice tonight. I'm going to let it do its job the first time. I've pulled the paper off to make the black side sticky. I'm going to take that magnet and stick it in there and hold it in place in the arm. I am going to type in your pupillary distance, which is 29 for your right eye, 30 for your left. So, I'm going to hit this little minus button. And it's going to go down half millimeter increments till I hit 29. There we go. Now the geometric center of this frame is where that blue cross is. I am going to, actually it doesn't even matter because it's Plano, I can move it here, there, it really doesn't matter. But for the sake of argument, I'm gonna do it the way that I've always been trained. But the blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. If you were to measure vertically and horizontally, that blue cross would be in the center as you see it. The pupillary distance is right there, this orange line. Hopefully you can see all of that. I'm going to put that. That is your OC, your optical center, going there. And the other two lines I put on there tells me that it's in there perfectly. Of course, this is a non-prescription lens for your right eye. But I'm going to hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. I'm going to do the same thing now for the left lens. Now this is critical that I place it where it's supposed to go. Your pupillary distance for your left eye is 30. So I'm going to hit the... It mirrors the, the left, so I'm going to hit this plus button twice until 30 pops up there. Put that dot in the optical center. Those other two dots tells me it's lined up perfectly, that it's oriented in there just right. Ooh, almost forgot to put the block on there. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. And hit the button, and now the arm's going to come down and place the block onto your left lens. So this is... The Edger. This is what costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out and buy their own and then you won't need me anymore. So I'm going to take your right lens and that silver button. The magnet is going to do its job twice now. It's going to hold it in place into the Chuck or as I like to call it the Charles because I don't know the machine well enough to call it Chuck. But I'm going to wake the machine up. That is the shape of your lens. I do not want to actually you know what let's yeah I don't want to polish the edge of your lens and I'm only going to put a bevel onto the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. And I'm going to put a slightly heavier bevel on the rear surface, the concave surface of the lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. I'm going to hit this green arrow, which is start in every language. The door closes, that clamp is going to shut. And then the lens is going to go up and it's going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's going around measuring the shape. And it's actually the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly and precisely where to cut the bevel into the lens so you have the least amount of differences going both ways. It can move the bevel frontwards. It can move it backwards. But it's going to place it right there to have the best fit possible. Now, if you see light flickering in the background, that is water running, and it's only there to catch the optical sawdust coming off the back of the lens, or the back of the cutting wheel. In just a moment, you will see your lens as it touches down onto the cutting wheel. So your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Well, your lenses are the Essilor brand of lenses. Essilor calls polycarbonate airwear because it feels that it's as light as air. But these are the polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. Your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber, which is important in Los Angeles on the freeways. But yeah, bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. 
unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun, which is quite often in Los Angeles. But this is permanent and will never need to be reapplied. Now, the other nice thing about your lenses, well, for one, they are the Airwear. TR stands for Transition Signature 7 Series. GY is gray. Now, the other nice thing is that the AS stands for aspheric. Aspheric simply means not spherical. A spherical lens is completely round in every direction. Aspheric lenses are much flatter to fit in today's flatter curvature frames. Now, if you notice, it's cutting the groove. There's a little spinning blade cutting a groove into the lens that is going to where this string is going to hold it in place. So when you buy glasses from people online, they charge you for your prescription in plastic lenses. And then if, which is no bueno, then if you want to upgrade to the thinner, lighter weight, unbreakable, bulletproof polycarbonate lenses, they charge you an upgrade fee for that, which again is no bueno. And then if you want the, th the flatter curvature aspheric lenses, they charge you a third fee for that which is just downright terrible terrible it's just terrible but that's what you get for free simply by buying the frame for me you're going to get someone else's top tier premium lens but you get for free simply by buying the frame that's how i make premium the new standard so the groove is finished being cut into the lens it's going to drop back down onto a wheel just to rough out any rough edges to smooth out any rough edges that may left to be left over from the grinding now in just a minute water is going to kick in just to wash away any optical debris polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic and high index plastic cut wet had this been plastic or high index, that water would have been running the whole time. It's only kicking in for the last 20 seconds. Now this lever is going to come out and it's going to apply the safety bevel to the front surface of the lens as well as the rear surface of the lens. Just to smooth out the finish cycle of smoothing everything out. Now it's going to do the back surface. In just a moment I will open this door with my mind. You like that? I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can, it just takes a couple hours, but I can do it. So I'm gonna dry your lens off. I want to run my thumbnail around the edge of your lens to wash, wash away any of that optical debris. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully scrape it all off. Make sure there's none left before I mount it into your frame. I'm gonna be very anal and precisely move all of it. And once it's all off of your lens, I collect it into one pile on this workbench. And once it's in cleanly into one pile, I wipe it on the floor. Because <laughs> that never gets old. So everyone wants to know how to put the lenses in a frame like this. So what you do is you tuck it in. There's actually a little groove on the inside, which is just like this liner. Tuck the lens in where it goes. And you hear you have to have the right tool for that job. That tool is a little piece of ribbon for wrapping presents. This is like a little plastic strap that would come on a UPS package. But I fold it in half so I can grab both sides of it. And I start at the outside corner and I work my way towards the nose. And when you hear the snap, it is in the frame. Now you have to put a finger onto the frame to slide this out. I'm not going to use this finger, this finger, this finger, or that finger. I'm going to use this finger. So while holding it, I place that finger on the lens and then I slide the strap out and we are good. Let's go ahead and take this block off. It is no longer needed. Pull that sticker off and we're done. So let's go ahead and put the left lens in, flip that over to L. 
use that magnet to hold it in place in the Chuck. Okay, the Charles, the Chucky baby. Can I call you Chucky baby? And let's go ahead and hit the green arrow. The door closes, the clamp shuts. And then it's going to again go up and be traced by the two white styluses, making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. But again, it's also measuring the, the lens to find out the shape and then measuring the thickness of the lens to know where to place the bevel so you have the best fit possible in this frame. Of course, you're going to have no edge thickness anyway with your prescription. But still, every day I make some very strong thick lenses thicker lenses and it becomes more critical then. So even though these are non-prescription, I want to come back down here to my trusty Marco 101 lensometer. I'm going to put it in over that red dot and measure the power. And what do you know? I'm getting zero, no prescription, Plano, which is a city in Texas. But the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. It starts at zero, which we in the business again call Plano, and goes up from there. 0 0.25, 0 0.75, I'm sorry, 0 0.25, 0 0.50. I didn't know there was going to be so math, much math involved. But 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1, and so on. So you need no correction for your right eye. Your right eye is still 20-20, but you need some for your left eye. now. You need no minification, you need no magnification. Your prescription is completely astigmatic, meaning that the only prescription is for the astigmatism correction. Now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism, it just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. It is, no one freaks out when they hear that, but this is not a disease, it is not an affliction. It fluctuates, it comes and goes, it's no big deal. But. You need no magnification for your right eye, but you need three steps of astigmatism correction. Astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. So think of it as the fine tune knob, and we're going to turn that knob to 115. A straight line is 0 to 180, a 0 being the tip of my, my pen. We're going to turn that pen not to 180, but we're going to go just past the 90 meridian, go to about 115. So this number could be anywhere from 0 to 180. These first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number, again, not so much. So if you missed any of that, let me recap. Oh, you like that? You like that joke? You're mumbling. What are you groaning about? You'll be telling that joke tomorrow. So this frame, the Versace, where is that Versace? I've already lost it. It's down here. The Versace sells for $270. And again, it comes with one clear pair of prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses you upgrade it to the transition which is fifty dollars more for a total of 320 the only other thing you can add on is Crizal anti-glare coating for about forty dollars more but next pair you can do that with where's my flashlight I can't find you know I've got a smaller flashlight but I just can't find it but yeah this is a really really nice frame really nice frame this is one of the rare brown and gold Usually everything seems to be black and gold, but this is one of the rare, rare brown and gold combinations. Where are we at? Where are we at? All right, it's cutting the groove into the lens. Just a moment, it's going to go back down and smooth everything out. When you contacted me, you said you just needed these to see road signs at a distance. That is true with your prescription, a bright light, the sun or the everyday, you know, indoor lighting is good, but at nighttime, that's when you have a problem. So this will be wonderful. You probably don't need these as much during the day. I mean, they're still fashionable and very cool to wear, but nighttime is when you're gonna get your money's worth out of these, seeing things so much further. You can go out onto the porch at night and see much further away. Even though these are transitions, which will be really cool during the daytime, they're still going to help you tremendously amount at night. I don't know what's wrong with my speaking today. The days of people speaking proper English have went. So now it's applying the safety bevel to the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. Smoothing everything out. Ooh, that's nice and smooth. 
one of my favorite rap groups from the 80s and 90s. And now it's smoothing out the rear, the concave side of the lens. It sits closest to your face. Doing that because if these ever touch your cheek, it'll be nice and smooth. Is that Pete Rock and CL Smooth? I can't remember. That's going back too far. Now, Angel, I want you to open the door for me. Come on, concentrate, concentrate. Angel, that's pretty good. Your first day on the job, you were able to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and dry your lens off. Use my thumbnail to scrape all that optical debris off the edge of your lens. It is called Schwarf. Do you see that? Let's remove all the Schwarf. May the Schwarf be with you. Actually, it won't be with you. I'm going to peel it off. I love it when it comes off in one big long piece, like like in your dryer, cleaning all the lint off the lint trap. I love it when it comes off in one piece. That just makes my day. Although, I have not done the laundry in years. Thanks, honey. I'm talking about you. <laughs> so, again, once it's all onto the counter in one pile, I wipe it on the floor. The reason why I do that is it fools people. If people come over and they see a dirty floor, they think I've been working. All right, so I'm going to take out your original demo lenses, the one that says Versace. I'm going to put the lens in, tuck the lens in. Where's my little strap? I already lost it. There it is. So grab my strap, grab the string with it, fold it in half, tuck it in at the outside corner, work my way towards the nose, and when you hear the snap, it is in there. Oh, snap! Again, using this finger, for those of you who can't see through my hand, it is this finger. Place that onto the strap, and then pull that out. And take the block off I'm gonna knock your block off and then pull that sticker off I'm gonna pull your sticker off let's come back down hey where my flashlight yo man where my flashlight all right so let's put it in the over that red dot which is your optical center your pupillary distance check the power and I'm getting zero no power whatsoever let's check your astigmatism correction and I'm getting minus 75 one tick mark away from one so if you had no money and someone borrowed 75 cents from you, which would be hard to do with no money, but you would be minus 75 into the red. That's where we're at, minus 75 into the red. Your pupillary distance for your right eye is 29, 30 for the left for a total of 59. I'm gonna flip that over. I'm gonna place the PD stick against my thumb on the, your right lens. And over on the left lens, we're getting 59 millimeters, one tick mark away from 60. So that is made perfectly. Now I do want to clean your lenses off. And I'm of course I give you instructions in in the package how to care for your Versace cloth, but I'm also going to give you one of my own premium microfiber cloths that say freeprescriptionlenses.com. And of course I'm going to field test every cleaning cloth because I don't want to send you a defective one. I want to make sure it works. There, that's it. But I also give you instructions not only how to care for your eyeglasses, but for your Versace case and cleaning cloth, both cleaning cloths, so they will last you for years. I also include a selfie request to have your picture on the website. So I would love for you to do that, Angel. You can do them with them clear or with them dark. It does not matter. So this is what your lenses look like while they are clear. I'm going to activate them. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm getting ahead of myself. But I'm going to get these in... When you get these in the mail, Angel, and of course free shipping anywhere in the United States, but when you get these in the mail, there is a small chance that these could fit too loose or you know too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to be higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I am no different. And I'll show you in just a moment, but I'm going to get these in standard. Because of that statistic, I don't know what's wrong with me today. But because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So just stop by a place that's local to you. I guess it's always going to be local wherever you're at. But just tell them if it's too loose, or too tight, or crooked, and they'll know what to do. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to get these adjusted to you. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I'm going to set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I press down on mine, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. And for those of you keeping score at home, I am wearing the Versace 3199 in color 5118. 
which is the dark blue with the Havana. Havana is just a fancy word for saying tortoise. But let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo. Put my Versace's on so I can keep working on your Versace's. Versace, Versace, Versace. So, this is what your lenses look like clear. And I'm going to activate them. Expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light. My little transitions box here in the corner. And as you can see, let me hit the button. It takes about 30 to 45 seconds for your lenses to darken. About 45 seconds to a minute for them to return back to light when you come back inside from outside. Now, all transit angel pay attention. This is important. All transition lenses will darken on day one. Give them two weeks of exposure to the sun and they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks until they get to their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield has UV inhibitors to prevent your dashboard from cracking from sitting in the sun all day. And that's why they won't turn dark in a car. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken. Or as soon as you get out of the car. They're also temperature sensitive, meaning they will get darker when it's 75 degrees and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. So Angel, that's what they look like the first time they've been activated. Don't worry, they're going to keep darkening. Come on, we talked about this. Don't you remember? But anyway, if anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the contact me button at this website. So Angel in the city of Angels, Los Angeles, California. I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut prescription lenses for your Versace 1175B. The B stands for bling color 1002 in the 53 eye size and of course these were made in Italy this is the serial number on the temple that you will register with Versace just simply write it down on the inside of this card and you can have a register if you like but I hope you enjoyed watching again as I cut prescription lenses with transitions gray for your Versace 1175B and hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.